Welcome to Mev Analysis for Hedgehogs. I often get asked about uh, easy to analyze beginner samples. And my recommendation is that you have a look at APT malware because oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes these are a little bit easier to analyze since they are targeted. So they don't have to put that much work into evading antivirus virus software. So uh, the very nature of them being targeted and not mass spread to others means that the antivirus softwares usually don't know these malware uh, before when they see them the first time. So um, for today's video, we are going to look at a uh, an at APT malware from Tola, which is called Pilobug. There's a very nice unpacking chain and it has some uh, light, slight deobfuscation that you need to do. And it's excellent to write a Python script or a CyberChef recipe or binary refinery snippet so you can extract the C2s in the end. For this video, we are going to use binary refinery, but I highly recommend if you want to train, use the sample, try it yourself first, and then you can check how I did it in this video. Let's see. <music> So we put the sample in the hex editor and immediately we can see this is an office document. So I'm going to proceed with, actually I'm going to check the strings first and then we are going to proceed with only tools. It's interesting part here, we see C users drawn pictures, picture one. And here's some odd string. And these look like encrypted strings. That's going to be interesting. This is a JavaScript file referenced in this Office document. Right. So that's all we see. Also, your auto open and auto close. So let's take a look at the embedded VBA code that I expect there. So standard Microsoft Office Word, let's do this. You see already here, it detects the use of XOR, it detects potentially base 64 encoded strings and um, auto open, auto close is being used. Also W script shell and run to run maybe the JavaScript file that we saw that mailform.js. So there's already a lot of things we can go to check out. Let's pipe this into file. So here we have the VBA script. change the language to that. So the variable names, they don't make sense. So to make sense out of it, we should rename them. So here I already see there's some X or going on. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm adding some spacing and uh, tabs. So it's more clearly visible where functions start and end. For instance, here we see an end function which starts here. So we can put tabs here and here's the loop. And that already looks like some form of decrypt function. So let's call it decrypt. Based on how this is used, this is going to be the data and this is going to be the key. And this is the size. So it's running from zero to size minus one. So that's our decryption loop. Let's see where it's 
being used and it's here. So whatever is put in here is going to be decrypted. So this is our data, this is our size. Can rename this again. Another for loop. We see here now this is our size and we want to get. Now the question is where the data comes from. So let's see where it is being applied. So here, this looks interesting. This is some sort of, let's see. There's our string that we found. And uh, this is a regex measure. Since we create this regex expression object here. And this is the pattern for the regex. It's a simple string. It executes here on another string. This is the result of the match. Actually, the match results for that's actually all of them. And this is then one of them. So we have here the match result index because of this line. Where does this go to? To the very end where it closes the document. So this is some kind of exit label. So this is the interesting part where a string is being used for the regex. And it's a string conversion from this part into Unicode or from Unicode, I'm not sure. This is a byte, byte object or byte array. And it's gonna be got from this active document full name. So it's getting the own file here, active document full name as this one. Or self. So a file, something like that. And this is um, byte, bytes data, something like that. And that is the size of the bytes data size. I guess it should make a little bit more sense. We are currently in auto close. Where does this end? It ends here. So and we are here in auto open. Let's see where this ends. So this goes to the very end. Let's put it like that. Exit sub end sub. We miss any? No, I don't think so. Another if and rest is not that interesting, I guess. So this is like the JS path. This is a folder, Microsoft Windows. Let's name it Mel folder. File system object and now we can see the full picture, basically. We see that it is looking in the own file for the string. We saw the string. And then it's taking the next data of that size and decrypting it with XOR. Afterwards, this encrypted data 
here. Encrypted data is put into this file, which is the mail from JS file. So, or in data file object, something like that. It's not encrypted anymore, is it? And interestingly, when this thing is run, the JS, the mail from JS file, it puts there an argument that looks like that. So this might have some significance, we will see. Um, let's replicate this and just decode the data for the, so we get the JS file. Of course, we could also execute it, but I don't have any um, office on the system and this is easy enough to simply decode. I would like you to take this as a moment to teach you binary refinery, specifically the ALU unit, because this is a very versatile unit for any form of custom decryption or encryption. First, let's grab the data from our file. So for that, we do um, the emit command verify this is our file and now we want to find the same string we are finding here using regex but what I actually want to have is the data after that so we already know that after that there is so size uh, 15387 that's the data we want to get. So we put a wildcard here of that size and so we can grab this data and we want the first match. Let's see what we get. So this is our data and that's the size. So if we said zero, we should get the whole match including our weird string. So and we can see indeed um, if we use the other one, it starts here. So this is this is working, right? And now we can start the decode operation. This is not a simple XOR because here in this instance, the XOR key has an initial seed, and then it is changed in every iteration. So every iteration the XOR key is going to be computed this way. So this is perfect to be used for ALU. Like generally if it wasn't changed you would simply do XOR with 45, right? If it was the same key overall. But since it doesn't happen we use this command. We are setting the seed for the key which is 45. We want to calculate the XOR. Now S stands for the internal state that this state machine currently has and B is the current block, so the current data block. And you also got to put an epilog because after after the XOR operation, the key is changed. So we are doing this as well. We change our key. So this is changing the internal state by calculating this. So it basically sets the new internal state value. Let's see what we get. And we get a JScript file. We can now dump this file, dump what was it called, mailform.js. So that's it with the first part. So let's continue the analysis of the JScript file here. Um, before we do that, I'm going to clean up a little bit on the desktop. Put the, the things here that we don't currently need. 
and I'm going to open this file in Notepad. So when checking our decoded script, you will notice that it is still messed up. While the beginning looks good, um, roughly from here it starts to be jumble again. So let's check where this roughly happens. If you open this in a hex editor and you go to roughly 100, you will notice that this is starting to not work anymore at this point. So at 256 bytes roughly. And uh, that's probably not a coincidence. So we need to fix this. Now, usually I would try to find the error or something in here in the modulo. And I tried the obvious off by one errors, but if you check the help, of the LAU unit, you will see one option here that's called precision. And it says that this indicates the size of the variables that are used for computing the result. And that by default, it's equal to the block size. What's the block size? We didn't specify it. So the default is one, it's one byte. If we say that the precision is zero, we have arbitrary variable sizes, which is what is being done in the algorithm here. So we're going to fix this to use the precision zero and see if this is any better. So if we snip now at um, 254, you see now it's working. So Let's dump this. And here it is. So this is our script file. And one thing you may notice already is the eval expression here. If you scroll down at some point, to, there is some mess of data again. Though I don't think we did anything wrong with the decoding now. Let's open astexplorer.net. So generally you will be greeted with a screen like that. So this is the abstract syntax tree parser Babel for JavaScript. And we are gonna enter the code here starting from, from that point. It says unexpected token. So I guess it's missing brace. And here we can see the abstract syntax tree. And we can see there are four function declarations and one try statement. Now the relevant part needs to happen here um, because the function declarations do not execute themselves. So when we want to see if there's anything interesting, so I would actually then check first in this area and see what it is doing. Furthermore, we can add the transform for Babel and get a pretty, pretty print of our script. So let's copy and paste this pretty print. And now look into the try catch statement. Oh, there is something wrong, sir. And that is the um, transformation that is being done here. We don't want this transformation. So this reverses identifiers. Turn on prettier. So, okay, that is better. And if this is being executed, now we could do the same again. We could try to reverse the encryption algorithm that is being used here. That looks like RC4. We can recognize this from the two four loops going up to 256. So, what is being put into that, it is this, and that's coming from the arguments. So actually, we know this part already. This is the key to executing this, or making this file work is here. So this is the RC4 key. 
And what is it gonna do? So it's using this argument. This gets our data. And that's the data. So actually we, we should use binary refinery. That's too easy to not do. Um, so let's use binary refinery for that. So this is a long string here. And we are going to use the mail form js dot weir. Since this is a string, we can just carve string and we want the single longest match. Let's see what comes out of that. That looks good. What we want to get rid of now is uh, the quotes. So let's snip off the start and the beginning of this. Right, that was the step variable. Okay, that's fine. Base 64 encoded. Then we get a jumbled mess. So we better look with peak. And now we have an RC4 encryption with this key here. And we get our script. And there we are. Again, let's pretty print this. And now we have the Maver code basically in plain text. There's some encoding going on, but that is for the response of the server, which is not up anymore. And here are some strings we could uh, decode to make them readable again. So let's do that. There's an easy way to do that. We look into Let's put this code in here, actually. So it's the same here. Here we also have this, this problem that some encodings could be a little bit better. When you check um, the extra value, you see that the raw value is like that, but the value is like that. So if we just delete this extra information, we will get back the raw value. We're just going to do delete for, for the string literal, sorry. String literal delete pass node extra raw. Now we get all the raw values. Let's compare. So we had, for instance, app data, Microsoft Windows, and this is what it looks like now. So similarly, if you go to this function, w script shell active x object is now readable. So let's use that. And here we are. I'm not sure how interesting it is now to go through this code here. I think it's pretty straightforward what it does. Um, but we unpacked everything and we can now uh, use this to uh, actually analyze the back door here. You can see that it has some commands here. These are the commands it receives from the server. And whenever something is put as work, it will execute the received data with, let's see. So it's a very basic backdoor in that sense. It's the data it receives. And here you see the run command. So the data it receives, it will simply run. So we got the final vector. Now that we got the vector, let's put everything together to write one binary refinery script that can extract the C2 servers for us. We're gonna get back to this very first sample and chain the other commands into that. So we got 
curve strings. The snip base 64 RC4 with this key. Let's look at it. Wait, it's string, not strings. So it's of course we need to carve the biggest. Uh, let's look up carve. So what kind of formats do we have? Okay, I think it was one of the extract commands. Let's check the documentation. So it's XTP with which will carve common indicators. Let's see what we get from that. So this looks good and now we can also specify that we want to see only the URLs. So that would be XTP URL. And that's how we get the C2s. So we are done. We analyzed the sample, we found the C2, we have a snippet to extract it. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. And if this kind of the sharing of easy samples helps you along the way. If you want to learn MEV analysis from the ground up, then check the link in the description below. There's a link to my Udemy course for beginners. It contains 11 hours of video content and uh, the link is a coupon link that's a little bit cheaper for you than um, buying it from Udemy itself. So check it out and maybe I see you there.